congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our gracious Father in heaven, we come before you this evening. Thank you for the opportunity we had the people to come together and to discuss the uh, business and affairs of the city of Beaver Dam. That you bless the blessed Lord out that we come together and that we use wisdom and the knowledge that we have, have to discuss and may we do these things in the most peaceful and most expressive manner, remembering that we have to honor you in all things that we do. So with us now, our God and direct us in Christ's name. Amen. I'd like to welcome everyone out tonight. <coughs> okay, first item of business, we'll start with approval of minutes from the past meeting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second for the discussion. Those in favor of that? Aye. All the same. Mm -hmm. Motion passes. No silence of the bills. We have more packets. We have a motion second for the discussion. Those in favor signify that. Uh, oh, same. Next item. First item under old business is the bids for solar lighting. We got two, and they were, we did quotes, uh, request for quotes, so they did come through the email. But we've gotten two prices. This is part of the uh, land water grant down at the Walker Duck Park. It's a 2015 grant that it was announced on December 15th that we got it. They started the paperwork in December 2016, and I think it was March or April we got our paperwork to start working on it. So we're looking at 35 plus or minus solar light fixtures on the walking trail. This would at least go to the darkest portions of the trail. Uh, we've got the street lights and stuff like heavy around the parking lot by the farmer's market. So we'll probably do around the other side from that. But one quote here from Rexel, and they have two different ones quoted. The first one, and, and they have all the specification information with it as well, is $1,202.53 each. And the other one is $1,265.82 each. For about fifty-seven thousand, that includes some of the uh, new roof on the farmers' market and the deck built up by the lake. And it's it's various things. Gotcha. I remember that. And the other quote is from the Best Solar Street Light Lighting Company, and this is where the pictures for the Hartford's Walking Trail back on Oakwood Drive came from, because that's where we first started, just trying to get an idea. He has packaged with his as well, and his price is $770 each, with a minimum order of 20 pieces. That's a big difference in the price. Is there a big difference in the lumens on the lights? Or? Well, that's what we had to do. Because we had it all with the proposal of a minimum of 100, 100 or 120 watts. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. This will be something we really need to stand and go through all whole thing so I would prefer not to do it tonight. Maybe we could take this under advisement and maybe have a call meeting here in a few days. One table that to decide something that gives us a chance to look at it and compare it, make sure we're comparing apples to apples. Mm -hmm. you want to that? Move, move the table right Kevin, I know you just walked in we had to on the solar I saw solar panel. I, I, I can see it on this and I can tell what you're talking about. Well the first we had two prices about 1200 each and then one of them Seven hundred and seventy each. So we got to do a check. Yeah, we got close. Okay. Next under new business, first item is replace existing weather siren. Yeah, we had the uh, our sign here, at City Hall, that was damaged in a windstorm several months ago. Uh, insurance, we turned into insurance, and they had uh, cut us the checkboard, and uh, we need to look into replacing it. Not so much in the same site, but. Uh, I've got two different places from the same company, uh, and I'm assuming with this being over twenty thousand, we have to bid it out as well. Hey, 
if we go with, we have two other sirens in town, one behind, one behind it too, one behind Double Chin's uh, place of business on Main. If we go with that type of scenario, it's going to be $24,500. That excludes the uh, power hookup, electrician fees, uh, or you can go straight to a solar powered one with, it still has battery backups for 27.3. That would do away with the electrician. Uh, it would also do away with the monthly electrical bill. Would it be liable though? I mean, I haven't heard of it. Well, that, that's, that's what most everything's going to now. Is no, it's, no, it's what kind of battery? Is it like a big car battery. The other ones have them now. They have yeah. like a battery in them as well. What kind of warranty do they give us on the solar panels and everything? How long? How long did this last one that went out? How long did it last? This one he was put in probably back in the early eighties, but it, it, it's a three phase. It's it's not a it's not a solar. But it was damaged by storm, you said. So it, it lasted that long. Oh, it's a pretty good record. Yeah. 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 Very loud, especially if you're meeting in here at twelve o'clock. Oh, right. <laughs> The reason I asked was when I was on vacation, they do a lot of solar there to supplement their electricity. And the majority of them leased their solar panels because the, they said the, because of the life expectancy of them, it was more cost effective to lease them than to buy them. So that's why I wondered what kind of warranty they was giving us on these. That's something else we need to take and check out. Next item is the plan and zoning compensation. Uh, I think zoning we normally give thirty five hundred dollars a year. Uh, I know that it has been said that we want to do the same for Harper is giving. And I think Harford is just giving $3,000. Uh, are we still going to give the $3,500 or are we going to match what Harford? How did that come about here? I don't know. You don't know why they lowered I, I thought that actually, I thought both cities agreed to give $3,500 several years ago. Several years ago they did because I remember doing that. We put it even because it's hard for people to have planning and zoning. I don't know why they lowered their that they didn't hurt them. Well, the expenses are still going to be there, so I just don't go ahead and get the 3500 I was going to say, do we, have a, do we have a contract that we're supposed to get 3500 or not? Something. An agreement, I should say, that we're supposed to get 3500 It was something said by the two cities. Mm -hmm. It's just something that we moved in a minute to do. I think that's at least something we can look into for next year to kind of inquire. You know, because in addition to us paying five hundred more, we're also furnishing an office and everything. If anything, Hartford ought to be paying the extra five hundred, not us. Well, no other argue that point. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it is what it is. We just asked them to put five hundred more. Good luck with that. <laughs> Do we need to act on it since we're just leaving it the same? No, because it's in the budget for the full party for one year. Okay, next item is the first reading of the annexation for the Beaver Dam Village. Actually, Maya, Maya Village. Um, the name of it? M-Y-A, I think I pronounced it wrong. But now, am I saying correctly, this is where they can bring in all the rest of the property, not just the level. That is correct, yeah. I didn't think they named it either. I didn't know they named it. Yeah. Is the other one named? Beaver Dam Village. Yeah, that's what they were going to call Maya? My village. Okay. So I'll wait move. I have a motion to accept the first reading of the annexation. Second. I have a motion and second. And, and make sure everybody did clarify it's all the rest of the properties coming in, not just not I just where they're building. Not where they're building. So it'd be all the rest of I think about 11 acres. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor of signify the iron? Aye. Aye. All the same. Motion passes. You know how many they're going to do with that thing? 32, I think, this time. 
Are you 40 the first time? Yep. I know. I used to probably talk to him. I think we do the same setup with the sewer right. that we did on the first one. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item is approved the 2018 motor vehicle and watercraft tax rate. And I have anything in my packet. So. This is just the normal. That's what the um, state sends us. It's 24.1 cents per thousand. Or 400, excuse me. Per is that the same as last year? It was. I think it is, yes. Mm -hmm. I'll lift that up. I said this one is a tax break that is set by the state. So you make a motion to approve it? Yeah. All right. Make a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, seeing it by that. Aye. All the same. Passes. Next item is declare a police seized vehicle service. Yeah, we uh, seized a Dodge Neon in a drug bus. Uh, it has been forfeited to the city of Beaver Dam. Uh, all the proper paperwork is already in order. We've had it already switched over to the city of Beaver Dam, and we would like to declare it surplus to be put on govdeals.com. What year is it? It's 2003 or 2006. Dodge Neon. 240,000 miles. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Those in favor say about that. Opposed same. Motion passes. Next item is Planning and Zoning Commission Board vacancy. This is just more an FYI. She's needing someone. So if anyone has someone in mind. We think that's when we get that taken care of for a procedure. Uh, Bonnie's number. Items planning and zoning health insurance. I thought she was going to be there. I thought she was too. <laughs> From what I understand, she is wanting to go under the city's umbrella to be placed on the uh, insurance. But the gentleman from KLC is going to request that it's billed and invoiced separately from the city. So that way they can pay it directly themselves and we're not swapping and coming through with the city's funds. So she's getting so insurance through the city, but she's actually paying for it. Yeah, the planning and zoning is going to be invoiced separately from the city's invoice. I don't know. 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 I Review and amend the dog ordinance. I think I need Yeah. Um, when you go through the uh, city ordinances, there's a lot of things that don't make sense, or sh sh I guess. states that the license tag must be attached to the dog at all times. What was that number again? 90 Is that the only three we need to make? Okay. Um, and then if you go over to... Uh, is, is that the only one pertaining to the license? Yes, those are the only three pertaining to the license. So we're going to deal with those. How are, how are Request that we remove 90.16, 90.17, and 90.18 from the dog ordinance. Second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify by nine. Uh -huh. uh, Opposed, same. Motion passes. Okay. Are you going to touch on 90.21? Impounding. Uh, I wasn't, but we can, we can touch on that. I'm wondering if we shouldn't. Um, there's a whole lot that goes into yeah. it. Yeah. Well, uh, basically, 90.21 states that any police officer, peace officer, or anybody with the authority up to the dog handler themselves can uh, apprehend any dog running at large in violation of the chapter of unlicensed dogs in the city. Uh, and now, uh, I don't know about Mike and the police department's workload, but, uh, and for me, myself, I 
at 20 hours a week, and I don't have the equipment to go and catch them straight off. And really don't have a pound. Either. And where would we impound them? Ohio County. The animal shelter. Yeah, the animal shelter would be the only place to impound them. So and that's where if we caught them, we would take them to the shelter and right. just bursting at the scene. Right. right. And that's what Tracy Ward mm -hmm. does right now. If she catches one, she takes it to the shelter. Mm -hmm. We certainly don't have any way. I'm not going to let my guys pull them back to the cruiser and tear a seat off them. No. Right. No, that's what I'm wondering. If we, when I read all of that, I wonder if we even need that in there. I don't think we're going to start. Why don't we do it with 9021, 9022. I'll take care of the cats. Y'all take care of the dogs. 9021, 22, and 23. Yeah. Those are all about it. Pounding. Yes. Request to remove that one all together. Those three all together as well. 9023. Yeah, I'll make that. That's what I'm going to do. Sir. We have a motion and second. You vote the discussion. So it's a favor seen about both eyes. Uh, yeah. Opposed, same. Motion passes. And then I have one more to go over. Um, if you go to 90.24, Alpha, um, it shall henceforth be unlawful for any citizen of the city to own or maintain and keep dogs of the type or species commonly referred to as a pit bull on the property and anywhere within the corporate city limits of the city. Um, this is something I've talked to a few people for the past few months. Um, I think if we put a ban on pit bulls, we should also put a ban on German Shepherds and Rottweilers and Doberman Pinschers. Um, I don't think that breed specifically is a vicious breed. It is how a dog is raised and trained by their owner that makes them vicious. So I request that the board sees fit to remove that um, section altogether and just leave it starting at B where it's vicious animals. Um, and that is due to a track record of being vicious. Since I was the only one that voted against putting it in there in the original ordinance, I'll make that motion. <laughs> well, I will say that some of the question has come up. There's been a question. I know if we have some people who call and claims that a neighbor has a pit bull, but the neighbor claims it's not a pit bull, it's an English bull, or it's right. something else. So it gets the point over who decides right. who what it is. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify the aye. Aye. Opposed, saying? Motion passes. We do have a leash law. We do have a leash law, um, uh, and that is covered in <clears throat> Section Four. I couldn't find it. No, it, it's in here. Um, Ninety point nineteen dog training at large. Yes. Does that one need to be reworded since we took the licensing out? Is it since we're going to be? Yes, we, we can, uh, we'll have to remove the unlicensing. And then if you look also, some of the rewording will have to come through uh, 90.24 areas too, because it refers to pit bulls specifically in some of those ordinances. So we'll just have to remove, remove that um, area. I have one more. Um, we do have some areas that the owners could care less if their dogs run, run loose. Um, after talking to the dog handler for Ohio County, she says that she has repeat offenders and they kind of just snub their nose at her and say whatever. Um, the ordinance kind of ties my hands at a $20 maximum fine for that. Um, so I request that we revamp that to the minimum hundred dollar fine for dogs that are we found off leash. Is that that's under ninety point nine nine? Yes. Item D. If you you look at nine zero point zero two, it uh it refers to the 98.99, which gives you the uh, the $20 max fine for each offense. Maybe we're changing where you got repeat before P. 
you to pay some social security? Well, we can do it like we did our, our one back in November. Your first offense will be $100. Second offense will be $200. Third offense, 300 and so forth. For, for most people, I mean, unfortunately, you have to get it where the, where the wallet is to make, make it mean something. I don't have too much problem with dogs around where I'm at, but I do have a problem with my, with my cats. And cats there's no there. ordinance for cats, um, for straight cats or anything like that. I have to make it like Wisconsin. It's legal to shoot them in Wisconsin. No, you cannot. <laughs> I knew that did Oh, you mean you can't shoot? Listen, I collect as many as I can and take them and get them spayed and neutered. I've got friends that we collect our quarters and get them spayed and neutered. Come over to my house and get those three or four cats that run around my house. They're driving me insane. What's your thoughts on it? Well, on the phone? I have no problem with it. I don't know if it's 100. It said in, uh, what was it, the last 90.9, Nine nine. It said that you know it, is, it can be a minimum of a hundred dollars. So I, I thought that was already in there. If it's a misdemeanor, it says be fined not less than a hundred dollars, no more than five hundred dollars. And then there's another place. That's where we have about the four misdemeanors. Yeah, the uh, the happens. first or the first one when you said not more than twenty, that was under a. Right. Is that right? I jumped down right. too far, Michael. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. yeah. And, uh, And, the nine, and that, that is for 90.202 and 90.05, yeah. which is your dogs running at large. Oh, and, and each day the violation exists shall constitute a separate offense. Right. But we do have one lady here on 2nd Street that she basically tells me and the dog handler to pretty much go get bent. There's nothing we can do. And their dogs, how can she control them? So. Well, they're supposed to be on leash. Are they on leash? And that, that's where we get that fine. It, it ties my hands in for the regulation. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is that not a misdemeanor then? Because like I said, in, in, in this one it reads, if it vi violates 90.4, which I don't, I can't find 90.4 on here. I find 90.5. Do you have a 90.3? I don't have a 90.3 either. 90.3 is cruelty to animals. Okay, what's 90.4? 90.4 is dying or selling by chickens and rabbits. So, <sighs> so A will cover... A covers your animals running at large, which keeps me pretty much tied at twenty dollars. Yeah. So that keeps me pretty much tied at twenty dollars, and you say you can as a separate offense. Well, should we start at twenty and go up like twenty, forty, sixty, eighty? I don't go that way, or should we go ahead and just start with a hundred? Well, I'm Well, let's split the difference. Go 50 for the first time and 100 for every time thereafter. Well, no, there, there's a lady across the street from her dog got out a couple weeks ago, and I mean, she opened the door and the thing flew out. I mean, it well, wasn't I, her there's fault. a difference between right. yeah. Yeah. Right. That wasn't her fault. But, yeah. right. you know, I don't want her to be fined $100 and, for her dog getting loose because the dog's not used to going out. Right. And the thing is, I, I always give a warning first. So, it, and I understand. And a lot of times when people, like when people communicate with me, I work with them. Yeah. You know, it's when I don't get any communication or when when they kind of blow me off, that's when I have to set the fine because they don't, unfortunately, the pocketbook's the only thing that matters sometimes. So. Like I say, this apparently this lady doesn't think twenty dollars is a big deal, so she right. just does whatever she wants to. So yeah, you have to match her for sure. And, and a lot of times, I refer back to animal control to see if they have a case log on said dog and address to see how many times it is a re recurring event. Um, I wanted to raise the fine from twenty dollars to a hundred dollars for for your fence, just like we did back in November for the uh, for the uh, like the grass laws and uh, house maintenance and things like that. You always get a warning, so I don't have a problem with it. Okay. You think a hundred? Okay, you think that's too steep? Or like 
what you said, 50 and then 100 thereafter? Uh, the first time 50 is going to get their attention, 100 is going to really get their attention. I'll make that a motion. 50 the first time, then 100 thereafter. 100 for each two? For each or 100 minimum. 100 minimum. So if Doug gets out on Monday, it's a fifty dollar. If Doug gets on Monday, you talk to him. They don't yeah. do anything on Tuesday. You can find them fifty. Yes. If the next Tuesday the dog is wandering around again, it's a hundred. Right. And they should get the message by then, hopefully. I'll second. Dog's not bothering anything. Nobody's going to complain. And then right. I'll second that motion. We have a motion second for the discussion. And I have one last bit of business. It looks like Dean needs to come out completely because that refers to 90.16 through 90.20. The license fee. Oh, not Derby. I'm sorry. No, but. No, but it, penalty? Yeah, no, it doesn't need to come out completely. Yeah. But it does apply to. Those others will change. Twenty is the noise noise disturbance. Yeah. Nineteen and twenty are so that's what it probably yeah. was True. I'm not sure. Yeah. Needs to so start at twenty. Okay, nineteen and twenty is what I'm saying. Right. Okay. Yeah, twenty one and twenty two comes out like that. Okay. And that's all I have for him. Anyway, we're going down to the next one because that's you too, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, you're on Larry was Larry asleep over and I, I didn't know where you were. You wanted to ask about a camera? Yes. Uh, I'm also requesting a body cam for code enforcement. Um, it was put in back in, I believe, November that for the way I deliver citations is in person. Um, well, we have three ways. It's in person. If uh, somebody's not there, if the violator is not there, then it's the somebody over the age of 18 must sign for the citation. And if that's not capable, um, then I post the citation on the front door where it can be seen and then I certify mail it. Um, in light of some recent events, I request a body cam just so um, I have evidence of the interaction between the person and myself. So, um, so we don't get in the he said, she said match. Have you found one? Say again? Have you, you found one? Or you yes, I found one in Gauls. Um, I believe it's $200 or it's less than $200. And it comes with an SD card, which I can download straight to a computer. My first question is going to be kind of geared to AD. I know we'll have to put some kind of policy and procedure in place on this. So if you had any experience or knowledge of um, do we have anyone else using that? Anybody in the police department? Mm -hmm. uh, law enforcement. We were, we were advised that it would be a liability. Because isn't there open records law on those Open sites? records. You have to keep everything downloaded. you got to keep up with that for so long. I think you got to have policies saying how long you keep it and all that. There's a lot to it. Cuts both ways. It's protective, and it can be the opposite of protective as far as city liability is concerned, depending on the circumstances. So, uh, let, let, let me check the next meeting before you approve. Okay.
I can get some research on it too. I, yeah, that's, I know that's something I think we're working research. You know, I know when I was an investigator on Fort Campbell, we used them all the time, and I believe Fort Campbell, Fort Knox still uses them. So I can get with their civilian police officers there and actually get what kind of policies they have in place. Well, I think you have to have a bank you're going to yes. use it. You have to you're, have you're, going to, you're going to have to have a policy. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I think you're going to have a policy in place, and I'm sure we're going to have trouble finding that. But but it is uh, it can go either way to do so. I understand what he's saying. It's verification, and when he uh, when he takes to serve something or provide something, if somebody saying he was uh, saying something or doing something you shouldn't otherwise. If said, he's got confirmation of exactly what took place. But uh, I think we need a policy. Okay. We will check in on that when we come back next month. We don't have that one. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Next item is approved resolution for solid waste update. Yes, Charlie brought this by Charlie Shields. Um, this is just a normal procedure. It's updated every five years, and it's time for an update. And so there's not been any changes since it was last approved in 2012. We just need to approve the resolution to go ahead and set that. I um, make a motion to approve that resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? I do have one question. Does that cover, kind of like, I know we used to do the uh, grant clear abatement. That I know we did not do for 2017. There is a section in here covering the abatement. Because that does put us under the county's umbrella. We are. Since we do not have the, so it's Correct. all covered in Alpine. Yeah. Okay, any other discussion? Okay. Those in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Is there comments, Mr. Brownshaw? Uh, I don't necessarily have anything about what happened here. I just uh, wondered about the. Christmas parade. Not that I want to get anybody in trouble. <laughs> there was some talk at. Why did you look at me for? The heart for <laughs> meeting because you were the one that was being here. I, I know, but I just asked if we should discuss it. That's all I asked. And, and at, the, at the Hartford City meeting, it, it kind of sounded like something was worked out. When they went. It was the same night the tourism event. Yeah, we met at Sheffield and said that she spoke with you and mm -hmm. she said something about an arrangement or something like that. So I was just wondering if, if A, Beaverdam was going to have their own review or going to do it and, and then what that arrangement was. Final termination will be May the 4th Thursday of this month, which will be a week from Thursday night when the Tourism Commission meets again. Probably are going to have one. Uh, there's been one thing I know Kevin brought up. It's been requested by a lot of and businesses and a lot of people in the community. And that's why I brought it up because a lot of people were asking to just have it over the year. So uh, we did talk to everyone. And if, we go, if they go through with it, we've got all the work out. I think the one here will be like at 4 in the afternoon. The others going to be like 6 or 6 30. But we still got some other details and other people to, to get on board. Yeah, like a final. She mentioned that they. They're going to have some things as well to do, so she didn't really lay out all the, and they probably have to get together and find out themselves. Yeah, I know when I, t I talked to her, we told her, so we don't want to comp compete or run anything. If they wanted to have a morning parade, nothing over here would start till noon. Uh, yeah. But if they wanted to night, because it didn't really matter to uh, Arbor one way or the other. So I, just, I was just wondering if something had already been established, but that's all I had. Paul? Thanks. Yeah, I've got two or three things I have quick questions about. Okay. The first thing is your city trucks. How come they're not lettered with the name of the city of David Dam on? I can't really answer that. Do you no. not think it's important if one of your city employees pull in a driveway and the trucks aren't marked? You don't know in these days what's Who's driving what? Well, they have official license plates on them. But... Yeah, but it, a 65 year old man, does he go out and look at the license plate? Mm -hmm. but they are. And your code enforcement officer, he pulls in your driveway, there's nothing on his car. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you think that it shouldn't be identified? He's usually probably in a private vehicle with eight miles. Yeah, but he still, if he pulls in your driveway, you don't know who he is this day and time. 
correct or am I wrong? Mm -hmm. Is that a law? I mean, honestly, I, I don't know. Is that something that we're supposed to do? There, the, we have no policy that anything has to be littered. You know, in, in the past, we, we try to. I, I know in the, when I was in construction business, you had to have your trucks numbered. They had a special number. Well, that's if they were, yeah. we were just carrying fuel. Yeah. So, I'm at. We got a play one on a DOT, too, with him. Yeah, we had a DOT number, too. But I do think the city trucks should say city of Beaverton. Well, whoever we used to put uh, magnetic on it, and then we, they start fading the trucks, and we took them off, and never did go back to putting yeah. paint on them. Because the vinyl letters started, and the vinyl pads, you know, they decelerated the truck, and we got ready to sell it. That was a draw back there. Yeah, draw back there. I have a problem with letter them. It's not going to an issue. We wouldn't have done. Yeah, exactly. And then, do you think we should have a magnetic kind of thing for Michael to use? Would you care about that earlier that we had a magnetic plan? You have a brand new vehicle? Yeah, I just got a brand new vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't leave it on except when you make it your right. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, you would be a problem to use. I mean, if you don't, it's just like the citizens be one. It wouldn't be that big. It wouldn't be that big yeah. anymore. If it's your personal vehicle, right? Yeah, but I use magnetic signs on mine on the mail vehicles, and they don't fade the paint too off the bat. No, it's got to be because you have to take them off so often. You yeah, can't leave them on constantly. Yeah. You leave them on constantly. That's, that's what we did years ago. Yeah, you have to take them off so every so often. So you take it off at evening with later drop sign. Next question. Okay, and the uh, city garage. Can uh, anybody work on their personal vehicles there? City employees can on their off time. In the city garage. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've never heard of it. And the other thing is, I need to leave a little note to, on the advice of the attorney on the uh, incident he and I had to put it on the record where y'all would have it. I want to put in there a minute. Can you make another place where this was? Oh, yeah, actually. I'll give this to you. And one other thing, do you still own the building on off of Lafayette up there, mm -hmm. on the other end of town? Yeah. I mean, you all were not hesitant to get on me about things. If you drove by and looked at that building, I have not. You might should look at it. Oh, you're talking about where uh, uh, the Bogger used to live back down there. Back, uh, okay, I kept thinking Lafayette. I'm thinking, where is their building on Lafayette? Off Lafayette. It's one yeah. off the chop. It's on Chapman. Yeah. Right where the fire okay. keeps it. Yeah, yeah, but I used to live there. Through my Paul's own house. I know where you're at. <laughs> That's it. Do we have anything in that building anymore? Fire department. Fire department stuff. Probably just kept some storage. Mike? Tom? Okay. Keith? Uh, not a whole lot going on. Uh, I guess I'll go to the regional sewer meeting. It sounds like it's getting more interesting by the minute in the morning. See what's going on out there. Uh, me and Larry did go meet with the uh, people at Non Woven at their factory the other day. The new one? Well, no. But they. They're built on their water and sewer. They're built on their sewer by the amount of water that in, enters the plant. And in their manufacturing process, they use up, what, two thirds or more of that water in their manufacturing plant, and it's not deposited in the sewer. So they're, one, and I, I don't think there's any problem with it, but they're wanting to meter their sewer their discharge and everything and not pay for the water. They think it will drop their sewage usage and so forth by about two thirds, which will, we'll lose about $36,000 a year out of the deal. But it is true. They're and, but they're not putting it this sewer. Yeah, it's not going through the sewer, so we're not going to be charged for it. And they are going to invest Who pays the meter? They do. They, they, pay the they pay for the meter and the installation. And well, I don't have a problem with that. that probably is so, good. That's good relations. Right. Plus they're putting this new in there, they're right. going to be doing the same thing out there. Yeah, different process. Yeah. Yeah. 
exact, they're making the exact same thing, but it's complete, two completely different processes. Really? The only thing we ask is, is that they use the same meter that we use, that way it's a read into our computer. And then number two, they get calibrated one meter. Yeah. I mean, they're going to put a pigtail on it where we can drive by and read it just like we do the rest of them, and nobody has to go in the factory and all that stuff. So it should work out right. Okay. Okay. Is that it? Or motion to approve or is this something? Well, I'll make a motion if we need one. Second. We have a motion to second any further discussion. Does the favor seem by five? I don't think I have anything. We're working pretty good right now. Mike hasn't had any problems. <laughs> Since our last meeting, we've had two concerts down at the park. Number one, I want to plug our city workers that helped because the first concert, they hadn't put up with an awful lot. And it is very much an understatement. And I applaud them for number one, not losing their cool. Number two, getting the job done, even though it was under a lot of stress, very stressful situation. And then this last concert went off like I've never seen our guys work any better than they did the last concert. They were awesome. And then I also want to applaud the police force. You got those guys out Friday night quicker than I ever dreamed you would. And that was that was about as amazing thing as I ever saw. All those cars were gone in about 50 minutes. And that to have that many cars, that's pretty amazing. And so I wanted to applaud both groups of those that did it because y'all went way above and beyond for those two, two concerts. Well, on the same note with the concerts, I know Trey and I went through the better parking lot run. They were license plates from Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Maryland, and Maryland. Georgia, and Texas. Yeah. that we saw, but then uh, you know, Mark and Lauren was sitting up there in front of them was four people from New Jersey that came in here, they were on vacation or visiting family somewhere in the area, but they picked this weekend and come with other concerts. And I was late getting here because I was at the funeral home and uh, there were people there from Newburgh, Indiana, and they said something about, you know, they'd never been to this with me, and I said, and they were from church up there, and I said, you should have come down Friday night. What was, what was going on Friday night? I said, they had cash and crowd. said, you had who here? And I said, cash and crowd. Oh my gosh, yeah, we would have come if we'd known they were here. You know, so I mean, they didn't, still, still are, we're getting out there, oh, but yeah. we still got to keep going. And, uh, but yeah, it, it, we can, it was a big concert. That was a good concert for right now. Not that the Martini Bark Bride concert was bad, it just, we had a lot of tension, for right. lack of a better word. Yeah, right. huh? The rain didn't bother me because I was on the inside, but, uh, and actually, we needed a 15 minute delay, and it was actually 18 minutes. You went on at 618. I looked at my watch. It didn't seem to bother anybody. Nope. Had a couple people come up and say, Can we leave me back in? We're going to go run home and change the yeah, it was It was a new thing for me, though. I said, You might be a redneck if you use your chair for an umbrella. Because everybody would grab their chair and stuck them over their heads. It was the funniest thing watching I tried to do that. It was a long time. Well, and that's something. Everybody knows we are fishing to do all the remodeling renovations here. I talked with Kyle with our RDS on Tuesday of last week, and I felt like they would have the last bit of paperwork on their end done by Friday to be ready to get stuff to the point. So that shouldn't take very long at all. So we should see a movement pretty, pretty quick getting started with the renovations here. Maybe Friday last week. Maybe behind in the hospital for last week. So he may be behind a little bit, so I'm not going to check with him. Well, one of his, what he was waiting on, something from the engineer, with, uh, with Walter. Okay. He may get called up and comes back into the end. Okay. Okay. Of course, when I saw him Friday night. But he was out by Friday evening. Okay. The Thursday night. Like. Okay. So we've got that coming up. Um, something else I just thought of. Did you ever hear about this, Scott? Yes, I told him why they'd be an advisory to get a description of what he's giving and what he's wanting. And I'm assuming he's in that process now. Okay. We have had an uh, issue with the new restaurant coming in was needing some space off of the alley. Not very much, but we met with Scott Lewis down there. I, I did, and Larry and I met down there and talked with him, and we're supposed to meet him again, but he's been, the last few days he's been kind of busy trying to get school started. But basically, what he's going to do is 
whatever he takes, he's going to get on the opposite side of the alley. So when you come down there, about the time you leave behind J.R. Williams, you have the straight alley that had just a little bit kind of like that in it. But it's something we wanted to work with him in order to get that open, because I know that's going to be big for the whole can, and big for him as well. Uh, the only issue really we had with it is the water line, but... Uh, well, the utility pole back there, they had to be It needs to be looked at anyway. But that's on down by the young oh the young building just where on that side. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought it was well, there's one on each side. That's what I thought. Yeah, I thought mm -hmm. like the, but the one next to the warehouse, it's about a foot about a foot from the warehouse at the bottom, and about four foot from the warehouse at the top. Mm -hmm. But we've got a water line that will be under this structure Scott's putting in. But it's it's a line that goes on down the alley to Second Street. It turns left on Second Street. It comes back up and turns left and goes right back into the building with his meter, so it only serves him. So what we're going to do is move his water meter up there to the corner, and then it'll be his line from that point forward. And uh, you know, he and I talked, I don't know if he'll decide to put in a new line into the building right there and do away with that, or probably, my guess is, he'll go ahead and just use that line until if he ever has a problem, then he has to switch it out. But, you know, for one use of one structure like that, that's a pretty problem. We just need to make sure that a semi can still get down through there because yeah. that would be a killer for those other businesses to lose their I, I don't think the semi's ever been down that. Yeah, yeah, Young used to get you deliveries through there all the yeah, time. Yeah, they, they come through the other portion. Back no, up. they did last year. They did both ways. Really? I've seen them both, both, both ways. Any semi down there now always comes and backs up. Well, there's very few businesses now that have a semi that's through there. Right, but we don't want to kill them. No, we don't kill that semi. No, that's because we looked at several different scenarios on how to make this work. We figured this was the best way. This, and there's enough room there to make the transition. The right there, there may be coming down through there. With all those construction trucks. Yeah, they could have to come down through there and make turns. And like uh, we talked to Jeff, J.R. Williams, all of theirs pretty much, with the exception of one, a couple items, comes on straight trucks. And he usually brings the semi down there, like I said, between the two buildings. Well, somebody was unloading down here on 1st Street, or 2nd Street. They pulled their tractor trailer right up there next to it and just, they looked like they were unloading, taking it straight across the block. Right. Two. 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 Yeah. Two. Two. Yeah, that, Jeff. Jeff. Sorry. Well, he's fixed up a new ramp over on the part of the building he bought from Connie. And that's why I think they really use the alley between the two buildings and back up there. It's right there pretty much as they've been ramp a little bit. This building where the furniture's at. So. Is he going to provide the description? Yes. And when we get all that, we'll have to prove it as well. But just kind of give everybody a heads up on what's going on. Does anybody else have anything? Uh, okay, you just, <laughs> just, just one thing. Um, hey, and talk to Hayden today. Reminded me that he's prepared to close. He specifically wanted me to tell the mayor that he's prepared to close and that everyone is uh, prepared to sign. Okay. Everyone. Yeah, so, I knew that. Uh, That's good. If he contacts one of you two, do remind him that, that I've got escrow. And uh, so just let us know when it's going to actually close. Whether it's over here or in his office or back on that. Side on sides, 40 by 60. Can we get that out in time when we have it good? If you well, did it for 30 days and open up the next meeting, that way it gets everybody. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, we have it for the September right. meeting. Correct. I'll have, I'll have a bid space from Randall Wallace by tomorrow. So that's the 11th of September, so that's. My question is, is that big enough? Never big enough. I, that, that's every time we think something, we add more length to it. So we have more. How much bigger is that than the original? Well, no, this won't be used for concession. I mean, it's, it's going to have a multi purpose. Concession, going to be concession only. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, but I mean, we, that would, that's bigger than what we started out with. Correct. Okay. Oh, so well, what we got our funding for? Yeah. Yeah. So we talked to them about it, and they had no problem with it. Would using mean, those funds to go along make something a little bigger so we can go ahead and get what we needed. Would we, would we be able to have paid it in there? Yes. 
I just hope don't think you don't want that thing. Probably don't because of where it's at, but I was just in case of an emergency, I was wondering if it was so don't take possible. Any, any performer will go for it. So maybe we could do the building on the, another building on the other side? <laughs> Down the road. Well, if you know, the we transformer hadn't been where it was at, yeah. this one would have probably been on the other side. But we talked right. about one building one somewhere, like the one we looked at over there at Green Tortured last mm -hmm. year, if you remember. And that would be really and nice, even if it wasn't there, if we could get that down there. Well, and I've got, we were in Evansville this weekend at the Vandenberg County 4-H Fairgrounds, and I took some pictures of a building there, which was something similar to what you're talking about. Yeah. And I see a lot of uses for it. Well, we talked about having that and then being able to rent it out mm -hmm. for you know, facilities, too. That would really be nice. Well, and the architect is supposed to have stuff here. She's in the stages now of putting uh, call assessments on everything. So we could, Get that, so that should be done here pretty soon too on the rest of that park facility. So I have nothing but four seconds. I don't know anything. Yeah. I did have one out about it, if that's okay. Um, I've had a couple of people in my neighborhood complain about um, speed limit signs. I think there's only like one or two on Hickory Drive, and people fly down through there. Yes, they do. Um, and also, there's a few big potholes. Like they're on the that people have complained about. I don't, I don't know who. We've been talking about them. Okay. Or patched. Didn't know it'd be patched this year. Have you started painting them? Started painting Wait, no studies. Have they any idea when they're. No, there's no other bathrooms there. I've driven out there when they were working last month. So. We actually had the lines marked out there a month ago. We want to dig up the soft spots and put rock down in and patch them back over. Of course, we run out of time, so you know, Lisa called this morning and had to relocate it. So, hopefully, by the end of the week, we can be providing the rainbow dump. We can be digging soft spots out and getting the base there. Do we go any type of uh, motion to put up bids on a building? You don't have to. That was done in my so I thought we'd already proven okay. to do it. We were just waiting on to get the okay. final specs on it. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn.